Orale, and we're back with the Pocho Hour of Power, and we are joined by one of the icons of Hollywood that uh, all the raza knows, uh, and the whole world knows. Uh, it's I, I think you're like the ambassador uh, of Aslan to the planet. It's <laughs> Danny Trejo. Welcome to the Pocho Hour of Power, bro. Thank you, Pocho Hour of Power in the house. Thank you, brother. <laughs> You are the living embodiment of the pot of Pocho power, man. <laughs> so uh, we, we appreciate you. Uh, so Danny, I mean, you've done so much. It's like, I, we don't have a 10 hours to go through everything you've done in your career. Uh, and uh, so, you know, just want to congratulate you on this new book, uh, Trejo and, uh, um, and, Dude, when I was reading the, uh, you know, the 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 co-author credit, I was like, wait a minute, I know that dude. That's that dude from the Tower of Steve, which is one of my favorite movies in the yeah. world. And he did, he did a, uh, 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 God, man, he did, uh, come on, Trejo, he did. I was on Sons of Anarchy. He did, you know, he's done everything. Yeah, and and uh, I met Donald Logue. Of the first time, probably 35 years ago, at a 40 at, at a place called Hollywood Drug and Alcohol Center, I met him at a at a one o'clock a.m. meeting, you really? know, and uh, and uh, it was a late meeting, and I'll never forget. It. He was probably one of the angriest people I've ever met, and 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 I've I've known crazy angry, you know. What I mean, I've known people that that went to. Vacerville, that were and I, here's this little about the redhead, you know, just like a wimpy kid. And I says, "Hey, how you doing?" And she blink. He says, "What do you mean? How am I doing? What do What do you mean?" I said, "Oh my God, they're about to my daughter's take out. Man, somebody gonna kill this kid, but not me." You know, I say, "Hey, oh, all right, all right." I walked away. Then I run into him again on a movie called Reindeer Games when he was going through a big thing with his girl and his kid and. And so we just bonded, you know what I mean? Wow. And uh, the way the Osito works is so unreal. And that's the guy I, I trusted so much to share my life with. You know what well, I mean? Just literally on, in this in this book. Well, the the, the book reads, uh, you know, very cinematically, especially that opening. Uh, uh, could you describe that? The, the, the book tells the story of Danny Trejo. Uh, and we think we know it, you know, uh, the the... The public is kind of familiar with you, or 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 sometimes they're surprised, right? Like you, you you pop up with uh, Trejo's donuts, and people are like, "Wait a minute, I thought that that guy was just like some bad dude on uh, the the most convincing bad dude in cinema for sure." Because you know you're not acting, <laughs> you're acting. I, I, it's I'm funny. Sure. I uh, one time a director asked me, "Daddy, here's what I want you to do. I want you to kick in this door. You're going to rob a poker game. I want to kick in this door. Everybody, all the guys playing cards are stunt people. So let's try to do this deal. But okay, so they were in a hurry. So I kick in the door. Boom! I hit this vato with a with a uh, you know the butt of a rifle. Boom! Bam! I hit this girl. I, put this guy down and I'm screaming at him, you know, I haven't killed anybody all day. Move. And, uh, and, uh, the, cut, cut, the, cut, cut, the dirty. my God, Danny, where did you study? I said, uh, <laughs> Vaughn Safeway, uh, <laughs> poker games that we robbed. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but so, so I think the first, the first half of my life was a, a character study of the people that I was going to play, but yeah. <laughs> I have a friend that's a uh, stuntman. He's a Chicano mm -hmm. stuntman. Yeah. And he's like, hey, catch me in whatever, you know, uh, he's in C the, the, the Sicario movie. Catch me in Sicario. I'm the first Mexican to die. You know, <laughs> he's always play, always plays that. But you, you know, transcend I, this, huh? I have a, I have a, a stunt guy, Norm Mora. And because uh, and, uh, people, actors don't like to say they don't do their stunts. I'm... Do, hey, I don't do stunts. I tell a director, mira, I don't jump off a curb, okay? I got this vato here looks just like me. 
<laughs> he looked so much like me that one time my daughter went up and said, Dad, Dad, give me some money. And <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> it was Norm, you know. So believe me, when you see me jump out of a window holding on to guts, it's Norm. Yeah. <laughs> it's Norm. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Well, uh, I, I, you really transcend a lot of uh, things. Um, you show that, uh, you know, limitations can be steps, right? They could be a, a stairway out, right? You know what? We're only as limited as our mind. That's it. And I, I never knew that, but I realized that this isn't a journey you can do by yourself. I have a great support system. I've got the Osito, and with God on your side, nobody can stop you. And uh, and uh, and it's like my support system. And it's funny because I met Donald Logue, the way the Osito works, I met Donald Logue 40 years ago. We bonded on a movie. We became best friends. He was the only one I could trust with my life story. So that was like set up, all right? Mario Castillo, I met him in Quilma, San Quentin. I was doing blood in, blood out. He was a resident. It's funny, he says, oh, I was a resident, okay? I'm not an inmate, I'm a resident. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so, but Era de Los, he was from LA. And and uh, uh, Quentin was the Northern Reception Center. So North, South, but I look at him and he's wearing a pair of blue shorts. And I'm thinking, what? Todos, everybody had red. I said, the hell's wrong with you? I, said, I gotta represent Holmes. You know what I mean? So, so we talked and stuff, and then, and then I said, "You want to get in this movie as an extra, right?" And he said, "Uh, no, you know what? We, we got the the word from the from the mafia that, you know, nobody can be in these movies because of what was happening with America Me, you know, with right. with almost, you know." So I said, "All right," but we bonded. We became friends. He come out of prison and started working in drug abuse. And then he got sick, and then he couldn't work. He lost his apartment. Well, you know, move in with me, Holmes. You just do the so be my assistant. So, so he started taking my phone calls stuff till he got better. And my drive. So he'd been with me like 14, 15 years. Wow. It's about to save my kid's life. Yeah. Wow. Do you understand? I was in Germany. My son was in a in a in a in a crack house overdosed, and he went and grabbed him. You know, yeah. and so. That's the way the Osito works. You do something for somebody, you never know how it's going to be paid back. But you can't expect it. Yeah. You think and, it's gonna... and you know what we don't have enough right now in our society is even just doing that thing, not expecting a payback, and, yeah. but, and, but, and not, wait, you know, not waiting to collect, you know, like... <laughs> Let it benefit someone else. I mean, that's, that's how life is. It's, you it's got it. you know what? Right? Our last, it's funny, our last administration, the, 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 the years we've gone through, okay? Uh, it's like we, we bred hate. It's just so funny. It's like so much hate came out of the last four years, five, five years. And it's like, you know, they're, they're beating up old Chinese people. They're beating up old Japanese, Asian people. You know, uh, no, we don't gonna let these kids in the border. And it's like, I thank God, man. I thank God that that the that, uh, 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 our president, you know, is is a humanitarian. We entertain the kids in, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Pomona, all the kids that are housed there in Pomona, all the kids that are housed in Long Beach, because, and people are asking me, well, why are their mothers dropping them at the border? They don't understand. So the cartels won't get them, yeah. you know, because the cartels are trafficking all them kids. They're finding little chicanitas in Iraq, Iran, uh, Middle East, you know, because they're, they're trafficking them. So mama's saying, hey, here, uh, Mia, I, I'm just trying to save your life, you know? And so I thank God our president is a humanitarian. I thank God for Newsom because he gave me the okay, ponle, go on, go to both of them. Uh, and then he says, go to San Diego, si quieres. So we're entertaining. I got, I got Tara New, I got Diana Gonzalez, I got uh, uh, Jasmine, I got uh, Baby Bash, I got Trish Toledo, I got Frankie J, and we we rocked them, Holmes. We just rocked them, and so I want to do everything I can for anybody. That is so great, Danny. Using your um, 
you know, uh, all, all the, uh, using all your hard work as, yeah. as a plus, as a benefit for platform. Uh, you know, when, when I walked out, when we were the kids from, from Pomona and Long Beach, when I walked out, all these little kids that ain't smiled since they got here are going, machete, machete. <laughs> <laughs> and get how how global the the world is now because like i hadn't been uh back to mexico city uh for years since i was a kid since i was discovering what it meant to be a proud mexicano proud chicano and i was little like 13 and then i went 2018 and it was it's like being in la and manhattan at the same time i mean yeah. like you know and the internet has changed everything so everything. I, I, that that's great that the little kids that are yeah. in detention you know what, like what, but, what i've realized is, is it's like this is one planet all right one planet yeah. and 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 if we don't if we don't if we don't shape up it's like we got about 20 years left before we've irreversible right so it's like we're all on the titanic looking for a good seat do you know what i mean so yeah. we got to help we got to <laughs> we got to help each other that's you know right. what I mean? And yet, I don't, you know, I, I love that. I love that. No doctors, doctors without borders, you know? And so yeah. here they are. You know, we got wars in Iraq, Iraq. We ought to be fighting the people that are, that are, that are screwing up Honduras and, and, and Guatemala. And that's what, you know, why uh, Pamela Harris, look, Kamala Harris, I, <laughs> Our vice president, she's down there where the problem is. You know what I mean? The, the problem is at the border. No, it's not. It's in Honduras. It's in Guatemala. It's in, you know, because that's why are they why are they leaving? Because they don't want their kids to die. Yeah. And as the richest country in the world, we should be able to uh walk and chew gum at the same time, you right? You got it. We got the richest country in the world. We got the biggest home, homeless problem because people won't understand. We've got a methamphetamine problem. We've got a, a mental health problem. That's what, go walk downtown and see what, what you got. You got mental health. You got, you got uh, uh, crystal meth. You know, you <laughs> It's yeah, it's like the uh, grocery store of uh, yeah. I don't know. But uh, uh, we're talking to Danny Trejo, uh, you know, iconic actor uh, and uh, also uh, donut maker, taco maker. Everything. Donut maker, kill. Cool. <laughs> hey, and, try uh, the pineapple fritter. Try the pineapple fritter. <laughs> it's unbelievable. But you can. Hey, if you eat more than two. You need rehab, Holmes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Check yourself in. But uh, we're talking to Danny Trejo about his new book, uh, Trejo, My Life of Crime, Redemption, Redemption in Hollywood. Uh, and uh, a big part of this book, um, like I say, the opening where you're young, you're in, uh, you're in Soledad or you're in San Quentin. Where are you? Uh, the baseball game. Uh, that's solid. That, that's solid. That, that, that is worth uh, just the, the price of admission because uh, <laughs> I want to see that in a movie. Uh, but uh, the addiction does, you, since you mentioned addiction, addiction does play a big part in your life story. Absolutely. Uh, you want to talk about that? Like, um, you know what? I had an uncle, my Theo, my uncle Gilbert, and you know, and, and my whole family, eran trabajadores. You know, they were like, you know, construction and hard work and, and they would come home and you could knew they worked hard with that first beer they drank that ah, you know what I mean and it's like man we got to find a different way you know and and all of a sudden I see my uncle Gilbert totally now you know what I mean he's like he's always khaki pressed and shiny shoes and and I don't know he's dealing weed I just knew he was sharp you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> he's got bottle picking him up in round flash and and, uh, and so it's like I said I want that you know that's what I want that's what impressed me you know and uh, my dad told me Tao from work and, and coming home and having to work that I, I'm sorry it didn't impress me that was like damn man, I don't want to do that you know, I didn't know the benefits I just knew that Gilbert was you know and, and so that was my role model my role model was a was a dope fiend arm robber that always lineal todo. You know, when I got out of the joint in, in, in 1969, I was working at a spot called Carlisi's Auto Wrecking. And 
And I'd been out about three months. Gilbert came out. He'd been out about a week, a week and a half. He pulls up in a new Lincoln, right? With Bolero slacks, 69 Chingon, $200 shoes. And that was the left one. You know, the other one. <laughs> and what are they? He's telling me, what are they? Get you? What are you doing, Danny? I'm looking like an escape from a Vietnam prison. You know, I'm looking in a, a wrecking yard. And he said, he gives me a quarter ounce, two quarter ounces, a half ounce, a half, a half ounce of pill, and a thousand dollars. He said, you know, start working. Let's do this. Oh, you can't be doing this shit. Wow. And I couldn't afford the clothes he had on. You understand? You understand? Yeah. And, and I said, you know what, Gilbert? No, I can't, man. And I, I grabbed the thousand dollars. I, I didn't take the car. You know, and, 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 crazy. and I went, stupid. And I sat out in a in an abandoned old truck. I sat there, man. I wanted to cry. Damn, you! What am I doing? Frank Russo, Frank Russo, Frank Russo came out. Right. I always say that because he told me never to mention his name. But, but uh. He said, Danny, just wait. You know what's going to happen. It's happened before. And he says it. He says, he says, insanity is doing the same thing, expecting different results. You know what's going to happen. You know, about a month, two months later, he's shooting out with the cops on, on uh, Tahunga and Van Owen. The wow. liquor store there, you know, him and Charlie Diaz. here, And, and so, so uh, it's like, you know, wait a minute. So, I just kept on. Kept, now, you know, I got $400 shoes, and that's the left one. <laughs> but, I but, you know, but you know what? Every time he got out of prison, I tried to almost, let's go get clean. It. And he did good for 30, 60 days, but he couldn't get it. Oh, man. He just couldn't get it. Yeah. Well, um, that, um, you made me relive my childhood for a second when, because I know, like, my dad was had that Mexicano Oh. you know work ethic and then he would come home with a six pack and then it, it, every night and it's over you know and then it's like the abuse and the violence and he eventually you, you know it's funny we didn't know we were being a, i didn't know i was abused you know, that was just like the chinguel palo i, I screwed up you know, <laughs> why'd your dad joke you because i screwed up you know what i mean i didn't <laughs> You know, it was like uh, that was. You know, I didn't know. I didn't know what abuse was till like uh, the the psychiatrist told me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so you overcame uh, that. Uh, I mean, what what what's that little voice though? I mean, was it the, your support network? Was it? Yeah. Did you have another moment where you just? I was, said, I was in the hole. I was in the hole in Soledad, and I remembered everybody from my teachers. Potential, un chingol de potential, tiene un chingada de potential, and but he can't sit still, and you know, and and uh, and so it's like you know, where's all that potential? And I just asked Diosito, let me die with dignity. Diosito, let me die with dignity. I'll say your name every day, and I'll do whatever I can for my fellow man. Yeah. And by the grace of God, I'm here. I'm saying his name every day. I'm doing whatever I can. All my amigos, all my friends that I call camaradas, they got socks, thermal underwear, cortos in the trunk of their car because we hand them out to the homeless here. Here. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That, that, that's good. Uh, I like thermal socks. Because it's like, it's got to be, you got to be, you got to be of service. Yeah, it's true. It's true, and that we're we're lacking a lot of that uh, right now in, in this moment. You know, we can't even that's, like to relate to other people. Yeah. Right? That's what our president is doing. He's being of service to the world, and that's what we got to do. We got to get back to being the the country that we are. You know, being of service, helping others. Uh, um, and that's what I do. Yeah, that's what I do. I'm I, I every every time I pray, I say, Diosito, let me help everybody, anybody I can, and and let me leave any situation better. That's awesome, man. Um, how how can people escape that? You know, we're we're talking about the extreme manhood and that that toxic stuff. I mean, you know, many of us can escape it. Um, uh, but you know, what advice do you give to somebody that that doesn't hear the voice? inside doesn't 
have the Diosito to uh, guide them, you know, what, what, what can we tell our brothers? For, for me, for me, is that I have to, I have to start helping somebody immediately. As soon as I finish here, I'll go get some old clothes out of my closet and just give them to a homeless. Here, come on, come, come, Misa. And, 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 and the, the joy, oh, homie, and and it was something that I didn't wear anymore. It was something that I was gonna throw out. Yeah. And here's the about the oh, dale, home. He this camera. You know? So it's like I that's so, and the feeling I get from that, it's unbelievable. It's like I know, okay, Diosito, I know you're smiling. <laughs> wow. So uh, let's talk about your 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 career. What is would have been what have, what some of your moments that you will uh, take you you'll see uh, on your deathbed you know you'll flash to that uh, one set because you've done a lot of movies. I, you know, I love Machete. I would have loved Machete <laughs> even if I wasn't in it. You know, what I mean, it was a great movie. Oh, oh yeah. Robert Rodriguez and uh, Robert Rodriguez made me a household name. You know, and that wasn't because because everybody talk about we're not enough Mexicanos in in cinema. We've got plenty of Mexicanos as actors. Only problem is we do not have executive producers yeah. that want to invest their money in Latino actors. Yeah, I mean, I'd much rather get you know. Wait a minute, Ben Affleck. Now, damn. Now there's a money maker. You know, <laughs> so of course yeah. you know, but. But what we need is somebody con feria, the vatos from Vallarta, the vatos from, you know, the guys that, the companies, the big companies, Mexican companies that can say, you know what, let's do a movie about Mexicanos, whether yeah. it's a gangster movie, whether it's a cowboy movie, whether it's a cartoon, you yeah. know. Robert Rodriguez, they let him have Antonio Banderas for Desperado. Okay, you can have Antonio, his Spanish, okay, but Selma Hayek, her voice, she's got way too much accent. He told him, come on, here, all of you, I want Selma. And they were, he, she, he fought for Selma. The studios didn't want her because, wait a minute, she's only done uh, novelas. Well, novelas are the biggest thing in the world. Yeah. <laughs> and, Talk about audience. So, hey, so he fought, he started Selma Hayek's career. Yeah. With Desperado. After that, oh my God, she has the most beautiful accent in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, they were they uh, were taking credit. Most beautiful accent in the world. She's <laughs> one of the gorgeous women in the world. I know. Honestly, I can't hear her accent really. I, I love it. <laughs> hey, God. hey. When she was pouring that wine down her leg and and and, and Quentin Tarantino, everybody in the theater was going. <laughs> 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 I know I was. <laughs> oh my God! We are talking to the hilarious Danny Trejo, uh, and uh, we're his new book, Trejo, uh, My Life of Crime Redemption. I, how come I can't say redemption? Redemption. Redemption and Hollywood, yeah. uh, co-written with Donald Logue, which is one of, who's one of my favorite actors. Yeah, one uh, of my best friends. Two of my favorite actors put out a book, uh, <laughs> and we're happy to have him here on the Pocho Hour of Power. Um, and I know we're we will um, we will promote your uh, uh, virtual events. Uh, awesome. And, and uh, we, we also, uh, you know, we're on the lookout. Uh, for any book signings you might be having Got in it. Los Angeles. All right. and, and also, we're going to put you on the hook uh, for, uh, uh, I know the, the publisher is going to donate some books yeah. for our pledge drive, which awesome. at, at KPFK, yes. you know, we don't take corporate money. So we have a pledge drive like every 10 minutes here. <laughs> so Awesome. And we, you. We, we appreciate you supporting our show, the Pocho Hour of Power. Thank you. Thank um, you. And uh, so, um, is, is any any last inspiring? You know, there's so many stories in this book. I can't get to all of them. I just tell people get this book. It's amazing. It's it it, it the first five pages of all knock you on your ass, right? <laughs> Thank so, you, brother. I want to know any uh, last inspiring words. Anybody out hey, there struggling? I got a. I started a record label. And uh, I got three singers that are awesome. I got 
Diana Gonzalez. I got uh, uh, Tara New. I, I got Jasmine Torres. And uh, Jasmine Torres looks exactly like Salino. Oh, wow. I swear to God, sounds same. Unbelievable, man. Wow. And uh, uh, we're getting ready to drop an album. Baby Bash, Trish Toledo, My Three Singers, uh, uh, Frankie J, and uh, 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 Coda, the barber. He's awesome. Oh, that's And, uh, that's and so uh, I love Trish Toledo. I asked her to marry me three times. So. <laughs> Well, I, we appreciate you holding up the, the, the culture for us. Uh, Chicano culture is uh, my number one thing. So uh, we appreciate that, Danny. And you've got the record company, the donuts, the tacos, and the book, and e every movie in Hollywood, basically. Uh, so, God bless. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're so blessed. Hey, so, well, you're, you're in L.A., huh? Yes, sir. Hey, I'll see you at my restaurant, homes on me. Oh, for sure. I already had a um, meeting there one let time. Let me know where you're going, okay? It's on me. Oh, oh, I appreciate that. In your familia. All right. No, now, now everybody's saying, hey, remember me? I'm your cousin. <laughs> God bless you all. <laughs>